Probably the second most important goal for Democrats in this year is taking control of the Senate. But the path to that control goes through Republicans. And one Republican that has been identified as a potential weak link up for reelection is Susan Collins, who has generated quite a bit of discussion on this show over the past couple of years. And we're gonna break down what the situation with Susan Collins is, how things is shaping up. And joining us to do that is Kate Joseph, host of Concerning Collins, a podcast by the Mainers for Accountable Leadership. Uh, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you uh, as well. Um, so before we get too into uh, Senator Collins, tell me a little bit about Concerning Collins, the podcast. All right, so it's a new podcast we're launching today with um, our first four episodes. And you uh, you can find us at Demcast and uh, all the other usual places and at concerningcollins.com. Um, we are taking a look at the main Senate race um, giving you the local report on it. But we're also keeping a laser focus on Susan Collins and doing everything we can to hold her accountable to voters, because she isn't. So the, the group that, that puts it this together has uh, a number of Collins, former, I should say, Collins supporters amongst it. I'm curious, when they when they sort of describe the process of going from someone who supported Senator Collins to someone who no longer does, and is in fact organizing potentially against her, what are some of the reasons that are that are listed? Well, um, Mayors for Accountable Leadership actually has a list of four principles that they look for in an accountable leader. And one is that they're principled, and one is that they are transparent. They say one thing and do that same thing. They don't pretend to be something that they're not. Um, they're accessible to voters and they lead. So Susan Collins fails every single metric that I just listed. And what happens is people who started out supporting her, or um, perhaps maybe uh, like me, didn't support her, but respected her because she was our senator and <clears throat> did a, a reasonable job, even if I disagreed with a lot of the things she did. Um, we get tired of being disrespected by her. So for example, she, um, she tortures us, she makes us beg her to vote the right way. She refuses to announce a decision. We have to take time out of our schedules to call and call and call and show up and uh, protest and write letters. And she pretends that she's thinking about it when in fact, we know she's not really thinking about it and is going to do whatever Mitch McConnell tells her. And after a while, that just wears you down. And so people who have been sort of floating along thinking she's a moderate, she's a moderate because that's what she calls herself and that's what the papers call her, begin to see her behavior is anything but moderate. Mm -hmm. She's not a centrist, she's not bipartisan, she's not independent, and she's not principled, she's uh, she's very calculating. Um, so look, that's, let's, yeah. let, let's talk about a potentially a case study in this, uh, a very recent one actually. It was uh, that she was um, held up as possibly one of the Republicans because she's so moderate and so reasonable mm -hmm. and independent that, that she might vote to remove Donald Trump um, from office. Right. Now clearly she didn't do that. She says we don't need to because he will have learned his lesson from the experience. What do you think about her, the stated reasons for why she voted the way she did? The fact that she sort of dragged it out, making it seem as if she might vote to remove him. What did you make of all that? Well, it was an exact replication of what she did during the Kavanaugh hearings where she dragged it out and dragged it out. And we all knew how she'd vote. And she came up with a sort of paper thin excuse to cover her actual vote. And in this case, um, She's a laughing stock right now because she her, the paper thin reason she came up with uh, is that Donald Trump learned his lesson. And you know, I, I guess it's been eight days since the vote, and he's already um, taking out retribution on people who voted against him and firing people and interfering in the Justice Department and uh, digging up dirt on the Bidens. They've set up a special commission at the Justice Department to do that. And um, so so her stated reason for, for voting that way was just ridiculous. And furthermore, you know, she said she wanted a fair trial and she voted 10 times to exclude testimony and witnesses from the from the actual trial. And when it was time to really vote, um, it was too late. Yeah. Uh, Kate, it's JR. I, I wonder what degree you can actually answer this, I guess, 
fully. But uh, we're coming from our point of view of being, you know, progressives, liberals, uh, and her calls to be moderate and a maverick and all these things that we've seen is mostly false. Do you see a lot of Republicans in the state? That possibly support her or like that what she's doing because it seems that she comes off as a moderate when in fact she most of the time isn't. Are they happy with her or are we only hearing about how Democrats are unhappy with her fake moderate? I I get the sense that she's not wildly popular among Republicans either. I think she's, you know, she's done well with sort of the moderate middle and um, she has. Since the Trump era, she's tried to walk this line of keeping the the Trump people happy and not um, upsetting all of us in the middle and on the left. And she is just not doing well with that at all. Um, when she made her one tiny little vote in favor of admitting evidence during the trial, I think she started getting death threats right away uh -huh. on that and um, from that side. And mm -hmm. now she's getting um, trouble from the other side. You know, so this might play into that. So I'm curious, I want your perspective both as someone who, you know, you have a lot of critical analysis of Susan Collins, but also someone who knows the people and the politics of the state. So the, the common refrain for months now has been, she will be more reasonable because she needs to prove that she is independent and moderate and that can potentially win her reelection. So all these electoral concerns. I have sort of believed that the like the fervor of the Trump supporters in any sort of disloyalty is is immediately attacked. That mm -hmm. that there might be an electoral consequence potentially to turning off Maine Republicans by not seeming sufficiently deferential to Donald Trump. But I don't know a lot of Maine Republicans, so I'm curious which which is the path that's safer for her in this election. I personally don't see a safe path for her. I I think. Um, there, there are, we still have New England Republicans up here. We still have people that believe in um, fiscal responsibility as they define it. And they believe in um, social moderation or, or leaving, leaving people alone in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, but um, those people are beginning to leave the party and, um, and going independent. We have um, a large tradition of, of independence up here. We've had a number of independent citizens, citizens um, sorry, senators like Angus King. Mm -hmm. We've had independent governors. And um, I, the Trump component up here is real. I don't know how big it is, but it is it is real and they are absolutely fervent and they don't, they don't tolerate any deviation mm -hmm. from their dear leader, so. Mm -hmm. uh, the podcast is Concerning Collins, Kate Josephs, thank you uh, so much for joining us. Maybe we can check in a little bit uh, further into her reelection bid. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.